Hey everyone, G Smith here and I am ridiculously excited right now because today is the first day of the Dragons of Tarkia spoiler season and unlike every other spoiler season so far that I've tried to do any videos for where I do like one or two videos and sometimes it's like the end of week one or I get you know so far behind or something this time I'm starting on day one, week one and hopefully going to cover every single spoiler um, throughout the season up until like the last day where they dump a load on us at once and even then i'll try and pick out my favorites so the way this is going to work is each day starting the mythics i'll cover the mythics whereas uncommons and then cops to end the day with or end the video with although today there are no uncommons it's just rare uh, mythics rares and commons uh we've got a few cards to get through so the first and only mythic today dragon lord salamgar a six mana black blue legendary creature elder dragon yes i know elder dragon it's so exciting to see that creature type uh four blue black he is a three five we're flying death touch and whenever dragon lord salamgar enters the battlefield gain control of target creature or planeswalker for as long as you control dragon lord salamgar this creature is totally going to be standard playable um i can see it seeing play in um well, the Sultai deck, I guess, is the only place that's blue-black. Although I guess Esper or even Grixis could end up running him if those decks were to appear uh, post-Dragons. Um, he is a th really good body. You know, you can't Lightning Strike him. You can't uh, Stoke the Flames him. Uh, he is so hard to remove, even uh, from a, uh, for a few decks. Um, sure, he is hittable with Absan Jarmi's power three, unfortunately, and he is um, hittable with every black removal spell in the format, apart from Sultai Charm. Every other like removal can really hit him, which is unfortunate, um, or all the hard removal anyway. Uh, it's a little annoying, but he is a very good creature. <laughs> Being able to take a creature or planeswalker, yeah, this guy is pretty damn good. Um, flying great evasion death touch allows him to block or um kill whatever he's blocked by it's so cool and i absolutely love his flavor text to go with his ability salumgar never passes up an opportunity to add to his opulence because he's obviously going to take the elspeth you just played again i'm not sure uh, okay. i do think this is going to be standard playable but i do think it's more commander playable than anything a blue black commander that's got flying death touch and takes something every time he enters the battlefield sure I absolutely love this guy. I yeah, he he's just cool. I think he's a really cool card, and yeah, I guess there's not much else to say to it. I do think he's going to be standard playable as a one or two of index. Then we come to our rares. So starting up, we've got Dragon Tempest, a two mana red enchantment, one in red. Whenever a creature with flying enters the battlefield under your control, it gains haste until end of turn. Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, it deals X damage to target or creature or player where X number of dragons you control. So if a dragon enters the battlefield, since they pretty much all have flying, you're getting a haster that deals damage to your opponent. Um, I mean, okay, to be really good, it requires you to play a lot of dragons, and more importantly, have ways to play a lot of dragons quite quickly. But just the f ignoring the bottom half of the text, there's a two-man enchantment that gives all your flyers haste. If you have a lot of flyers, I can see this card actually seeing play in casual decks. Um, definitely in the EDH commander deck, obviously. Uh, I don't see why that wouldn't see play there cool card um i don't know i guess it's something we had to see with the dragon tempest whole thing i've been waiting to see a tempest related card uh personally i was hoping for dragon storm but a card of storm yeah a bit unlikely so next up we have uh, a rare that showcases the new jeskai mechanic um for those of you who don't know jeskai didn't get a new mechanic with fate reforged and it does look like all the guilds that um or, or sorry all the clans that had the same mechanic in Fate of Forge as they did Khans are getting a new mechanic in Dragons. So this card is Profound Journey, a seven mana sorcery, five white white. Return target permanent card from your graveyard to the battlefield with Rebound. So if you don't know, Rebound is the mechanic I'm talking about them getting, but Rebound is also actually technically a returning mechanic. Um, I can't remember what, what block it used to be in, but it's kind of an old mechanic. Um, if you bought some of the recent commander decks it was featured in a few of the the monocolor precons the white one definitely had a card with it it's such a cool mechanic um i like this card i don't think it's playable but the fact that it returns any permanent allowing you to bring back planeswalkers and other things like that is cool uh again a little too expensive even if doing it twice i just don't see it being completely playable Control decks may be running a, a like white blue control deck running a one of to ensure that it gets elsewhere or something back from the graveyard maybe, but 
I don't know. On the high end, or, or on the very low end of playability, sorry, if it is playable at all. Um, I expect this card to be a dollar at most, rare. Uh, next up, we come to Sidisi, her Dragons of Tarkia version, after serving Salamga, it seems. She is a 5-mana legendary creature, Zombie Naga, 4-6 with Death Touch and Exploit. Exploit being the new Soul Time mechanic. And Exploit reads, when this creature enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature. So, that it? Yeah, that is pretty much it. But every creature with exploit has a mechanic when you exploit does something. So, when Sadisi Undead Vizier uh, and exploits a creature, you may search your library for a card and put it into your hand and then shuffle your library. This is great. Whenever it enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice a creature. And whenever you sacrifice a creature with its exploit mechanic, you get to tutor a card. This is tutor on a stick. I absolutely love it. Or tutor on a body. Sorry. I absolutely love this guy. Uh, a 4 6 death touch, a great body, and it combos so well with the previous Sadisi since you can have both on the field because they've got a different name. You can have Khan's Sadisi turn 4, create a zombie, next turn attack, maybe create another zombie, um, then play Sadisi Undead Vizier, Sack a zombie, tutor. I love her. I love the fact that they're printing both the dragons and the old Khan's. People are expecting just the old Khan's. The fact you were going to get both is so cool. I absolutely love this card. Definitely playable. Um, in standard, it's, you know, great body, um, five drop is not terrible for it, um, maybe not as good as Tassiga was, at least it won't be as eternal format playable, but the fact that it shooters is such a powerful ability, and if you combine it with the old Sadisi, I definitely think this is what's going to help bring Sadisi Whip back to a tier one deck, Sadisi Whip getting to tutor is really good. Next up, we have my favourite rare today, uh, and uh, no, no, not last night, we got the penultimate rare. Um, th this is my rare, but it's my favourite rare of the day, it's Stratus Dancer. A 2-mana blue creature, Jin Monk, 2-1, for blue and a colourless, flying. With the new morph mechanic, Mega Morph, which is basically, you cast it down as a morph, and when you flip up for its Mega Morph cost, you put a 1-1 one -one count on it. Not super exciting morph, but um, like new morph mechanic to have from dragons, but I absolutely love its ability. When Stratus Dancer is turned face up, count to target instant sorcery spell. And its Mega Morph cost is one in a blue. It is so cheap to activate, and it counters an instant sorcery. I absolutely love this guy. He becomes a 3-2 flyer and counters. Definitely playable and standard as maybe a sideboard card more than anything. But he's a dirt cheap 2-1 flyer for two with an upside. Great card. I absolutely love this guy. Um, I can see it seeing play in a weird uh, red-blue tempo deck. Maybe using Dragon Tempest to help um, give it haste if you want to play it as a two-drop. Like, you know, to play it out. Uh, maybe. Although I don't see why you need to do that, I guess. I know I can definitely see seeing play in a weird blue-red tempo deck where you counter things and fly and kill. And maybe have Mantis Rider as well. It's such a cool card. I absolutely love it. Uh... Again, I might be overstating this card. I'm not saying this card will be uh, really playable. It's not going to be everywhere. It's not like Siege Rhino or even Mantis Rider level of playability. But, I don't know. Definitely going to see a lot of playing Commander as a way to counter split second uh, spells. And I just really like it. I think it's really cool. Um, I hope I'm not wrong with it being playable. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a flyer. It's a cheap flyer. And the format really likes flyers. Um, flyers are generally strong. And while I do agree that it's not the best flyer in the format, the ability to have something that just counters target spell that isn't flip up for six is rather cool. So next up we come to our last uh, flyer. Oh no, last rare, sorry. Although it is actually a flyer. It is Deathbringer Dragonlord. A seven mana black dragon, five black black for five six with flying. And whenever it enters the battlefield... If you cast it from your hand, and there are five more creatures in the battlefield, destroy all other creatures. So if you cast it from your hand, and there are five more creatures, it becomes the only creature on the board unless some of them have indestructibility. Uh, kind of cool card, decent body. On the very low fringes of playability, I don't think it's that playable. Um, black control may want it, unlikely. Bombing limited, sure, certainly. Uh, if you get it at a dra in the pre-release, uh, <laughs> or in a draft, it's definitely first pickable. Um, but I don't think it being um, that powerful card in Constructed. So now we come to the commons, and I have to point out all these commons are really only good for limited uh, for limited playability, but 
that's okay. That's what a lot of the commons are generally there for. So first up, we have Sandcrafter Mage, a white human wizard. Uh, three mana for two, two, uh, two, two colors and white. When it's the battlefield, bolster one. Um, at worst, it's a three, three for three. Um, but it can pump up something else. Although it's got a relatively low toughness itself, so it has to be something. Um, I guess it has to be something that you want more toughness on. Which I can't think of much. Unless you've got a really high power low toughness creature. And you really want to just give it more power to kill something. Not a bad creature. Um, not high pick though. Maybe you'd pick it later in the tour packs. It's not terrible. But I don't think it's going to be a first pickable card. Uh, unless the format um, proves me wrong. Uh, with heat, sand can form a delicate work of art. With pressure and impenetrable bulwark. Love it. As its flavor text. Next up we have Ojutai Summons. 5 mana sorcery, 3 blue blue. Put a 2-2 two, two blue Jin monk creature token with flying onto the battlefield with rebound. Really cool card. Um, definitely high pickable in um, limited. Flyers are always good in limited. And 4 powers worth of flyers over 2 bodies for 5 mana is a very good card. Especially at common. I can expect to see a lot of those in um, Jeskai decks. Especially with prowess and stuff. It's so cool. Next up we have Salumgar Butcher. Uh, a 5 mana, 3-3 three, three zombie djinn, uh, 4 and a black with exploit. And whenever you exploit it, um, target creature gains minus 3, minus 3. Again, a high pickable common. It's easy to splash uh, with only one black and it's a removal spell. Decent body as well for its cost and what it does. Definitely high pick. Next up we have Sprinting Warbrute, a red, uh, 5 4 5 4 and a red creature, Ogre Berserker. It attacks each turn of Fable and it has a dash cost of 4. So it hasn't got haste, so it doesn't attack the turn it comes out unless you dash it. And if you dash it, you're going to generally be attacking anyway, otherwise why are you dashing it? So it's really cool. Like it as a card, think it's definitely going to be playable and definitely reasonably pickable as your upper curve in an aggressive deck in Limited. Next up we have Eerie Bowmasters. Um... A 4 mana, 3, 4, 2, green, green with reach and mega morph, cost of 6. So it's an expensive mega morph, it becomes a 4, 5 of reach. The design space has been used in both Khans and Fate Reforged. They've had a green morph with uh, reach or something similar with reach like this. Maybe the Fate Reforged one had a choose choice, I can't remember. But it's nothing exciting. I guess it replaces the Dragon's one in limit in the Khans one in limited. But again, nothing exciting. Decent card, but nothing fantastic to talk about and next up we have stampeding elk herd uh, a five mana five five three green green creature elk with the new teamer mechanic or teamer dragon mechanic formidable when st uh, stampeding elk herd attacks if a creature if creatures you control have total power eight or greater creatures you control gain trample into end of turn and since he's a five five and teamer you want to kind of have the ferocious mechanic enabled yeah, you're probably going to always have this enabled, and it's really good at giving your whole team in uh, trample. A common way to give your entire team trample. Yes, sign me up for limited. Great card, definitely a high pickable. I'm not sure formidable is always going to be about the eight power combined. I mean, if it is, it's very much a limited mechanic. Uh, at least the four power one you could easily do with one creature. The eight one, I mean, it's benefiting your whole team, but I do think it's more of a commit more, win more board uh, card. Not sure how playable that kind of mechanic, at least, would be in uh, Constructed. I mean, yeah, this is really cool. So, yeah, that's the spoilers for today. Uh, overall comments, looks really cool. I love the fact we're both, again, I'm going to repeat the fact, we're going to love the fact that we get the dragons and the Khans returning. Uh, I love rebound returning, and I love exploit. I mean, the overall mechanics look cool. Um, shame the other clans kept their Fate Forge mechanic, but then again, the others kept their... Dra uh, their Khan's mechanic and Fate Forge, so it's pretty even really at this point. Uh, so yeah, I'm super excited to see what's going to come. Um, I'm expecting to see maybe another Dragon tomorrow, or even a Planeswalker, or another Mythic tomorrow. We've got a lot of Mythics to get through, and a lot of Rares. And maybe some Uncommons tomorrow as well. Um, I'll see when we get those. Obviously, if we get any cards later tonight after this video goes up, they'll be added to tomorrow's video. And included with that, uh, I know we occasionally do get some late spoilers later in the evening. Um from uh, websites and stuff that kind of have to do midnight their time so we'll see what we get later but yes i hope you enjoyed this video um as i say i'm going to try and bring you a video every day every week for the next three weeks for the spoiler season um please don't forget if you want to see more of these videos uh, if you've enjoyed this don't forget to subscribe share it with your friends i'm going to hopefully cover every video and the link to um the mtg salvation form thing where i got the list of spoilers from will be in the description below 
Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.